Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make your clutch lines on these early model Cherokees and Comanches into a stainless steel or steel braided cable. Uh, this has AN3 fittings on it and the send is 90 degree right there. Um, this piece, well these two pieces right here I bought off of Amazon and one other piece I had to buy from a separate website. I'll link all of the uh, pieces I used in the description below. But basically, these Jeeps on the off of the slave cylinder for the clutch line use this um, plastic ABS cable for the uh, for the hose pressure. It's this guy right here. Um, but if you happen to break this plastic or if you just don't like having the plastic, there's just not another one you can go out and buy easily, um, if at all. So I'm going to convert mine to stainless steel, which also will make it stronger. And I've read on forums people that have done this actually get better clutch response out of it. They feel like their transmission shifts smoother. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, first step, of course, is we have to take the master cylinder, or the, yeah, the master cylinder, out of the Jeep. And to do that, you can look down in here. I'll try to get my light. You can see the top of the bracket has the back part of a stud, so we can't do anything with that up here. But... The bottom one, let's see if I can get a get my light down in here. Here we go. The bottom right there has the nut sticking into the engine compartment. So to get to that, I'm going to take out this washer fluid reservoir. And then on the inside, up under here, my light down. You have your clutch pedal here. You can see mine's really not holding any pressure. I can push it easily by hand. But up towards the top right here, this clip is where the master cylinder is held on to the pedal. You can kind of see it action moving right there. Um, there we go. And on the left side, you can see the bottom of the cotter pin. You just pull that cotter pin out with some needle nose pliers or something, and then the whole plastic assembly will slide off to the left. And then above the piston right there, you see the other nut that you have to get from in here. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling this apart, and then I'll show you the next steps. All right, so the next step is to pull this off the firewall. Uh, a quick thing to check is make sure you don't have any fluid in here. Um, mine is empty, as you can see, because my hose is broken and it leaks. It got cut when I put the new engine into here. So make sure that yours is empty unless you want to make a huge mess. Um, but should be able to now just kind of manhandle this out. Just like that. And make sure you don't lose any of the little pieces. There's a little clip right here. Um, there's this little clip that has an open end on it, so make sure you don't lose that down in the engine bay. And you should be able to pull this hose, this vacuum hose up to get your flush line up out of there. Um, you can just pull on it, especially since we're replacing it. Um, you don't have to worry about keeping that all one piece. But let me get this out of here, and then I'll show you the next step. All right, I got this up out just enough so we can work on it. Um, the next piece of this puzzle is to knock out this pin right here. Uh, this piece that's in the cylinder here actually is held in just with this pin. 
So once we knock this pin out with a punch, this should just slide right out. And a little bit of fluid may still come out of here even though you emptied this, so beware of that. Um, and of course in here is brake fluid. Over time, brake fluid will just eat through just about anything. You can see on the, uh, the firewall here where the cylinder has leaked just a little bit just from being overfilled or maybe just leaking over time. It's pulling off a lot of that paint. So um, if you've got one that has good paint on it, be sure to be careful with this step. If not like mine where the paint's all rough, it doesn't matter so much. But uh, we have to knock this pin out with a punch. Be careful not to break this since it's plastic unless you plan on buying a new cylinder. Um, so I'll get that punched out and then I'll show you the first step with the new parts. Alright guys, so I got this pulled out of the Jeep. Um, I've hammered out this center pin, which really wasn't that difficult. Um, here we go. Even as rusty as mine is right there, I was able to knock it out pretty easy. Didn't take too much hammering, but I did have to give it a few firm whacks. And then this is the piece that came out of here. Um, you can see it's pretty rusted up. But this slot right here... As you can imagine, this sits in there about right here, and that slot holds, with the pin through it, holds this from pulling out of there. So the fittings we're replacing it with are, looks something like this. Um, it has that same push-in, it's got the, uh, the o-ring on there to keep it from leaking, and it's got a spot for the pin to hold this in. But on the other side is A N3 threads. So, um, the kit I bought actually came with two of them. So I took the O-ring off of this one. I'll let you see them side by side with the O-ring before I do this part. Um, here they are kind of side by side. The lengths are not quite the same. So hopefully I can put this in and it won't leak. But, I'm going to go ahead and put it in and show you guys how I did it. Alright, so as you can see, I got the new fitting in here. I had to drill mine out a little bit to get it to fit uh, up at the top because the top of this new fitting was a different size from the original. So, I'm not going to leave the link to this specific part in the description. Um, you can do a little bit more research to find this fitting a little bit that fits a little bit better i know there are fittings out there that fit just perfect right like the jeep one does or you can even tap this out to screw it in uh, but anyways i got my piece in here and it's got the a and three threads on the end of it like i said so i'm going to wrap the threads with some petroleum grade teflon tape just to make sure it doesn't leak anything and then we'll reinstall this right back where it went after we hook the new hose line onto it. Alright, so the next step is putting the braided line onto the new fitting. Um, as you can see, I put some petroleum Teflon tape just to be safe. And because of how close this is to the firewall, you will need either a 90 degree fitting or just a pre-made 90 degree bend in your line. I found it's a little cheaper to get one that has a pre-made 90 degree and uh, the length of the line you need, I've seen on forums where people have said you can get away with a 48 inch line, but it's better to go with more than that. So this is a 52 or 53 inch line, something like that. Um, I'll, I'll put the link in the description, like I said, but um, this should be plenty to reach down to the slave cylinder. So the next step is to come up here down real quick. Just come up here and right here where this line routed under behind the brake booster. Go ahead and just pull this out and you can follow it down. Mine has the hose clamps on it right there because I tried to repair it since I couldn't find anywhere that sold the line but um, this hose right here just follow it right down to the slave cylinder. And then once I get this routed through here, and once I get this bolted back up and everything, I'll jump under the truck and show you what to do next. 
All right, so up under the truck, I've got the line running down here. Um, you can see it's got the AN3 fitting on it. And on the slave cylinder down here, what we're gonna do is remove this whole quick disconnect thing. And to do that, let me focus in. We're going to unthread these two pieces here. Uh, this one looks pretty crusty, but hopefully it'll still come off. But uh, this feels like it has a couple notches left in it. I think this is supposed to be hexagonal, but we'll try to twist this off of here so we can use this for the new adapter fitting. And once we get that on, which I have, I have somewhere under here. Uh, once I get that fitting on, I'll come back and show you the final few steps. All right, guys, we got this fitting on here. Um, you can see right here, this is a 7 16th 24 inverted flange, because this is an inverted flange, to the AN3 fitting. Um, see if I can focus. There we go. And just like up on the top, I have my petroleum grade Teflon tape here and here. I went ahead and bled the clutch already and it feels awesome. So um, hopefully this helps you guys out putting the braided lines onto your Jeep. And I'm not sure how the clutch felt before because my line had a break in it, which is why I did this mod in the first place because you can't find those anywhere. But I've seen on forums where people say that doing this mod actually helps your clutch feel better and say they say they swear that their transmission shifts smoother whether that's placebo or not i don't know but um i definitely like this and it was 67 dollars all together which uh, isn't horrible honestly so anyways hope this helps if you guys have any questions let me know down below i'll leave the link to some of the products i used in the description and i'll see you guys in the next one